All right. So, simple harmonic motion with pendulums. This is, of course, my daughter swinging on her swing at the park. Uh, simple harmonic motion in pendulums. The, the simplest example I can give you in real life, of course, is uh, a child swinging on a swing. Now, as we, we look at simple harmonic motion, it's always some object is oscillating or moving around an equilibrium position. Some position where if they were to just be able to stay there, that would be at rest. We move them away from that equilibrium position, they want to go back to that equilibrium position. And that's a swing. Okay. And of course we do have friction in a real life swing. So that's what I'm doing as I'm getting her going some more. And so she does have a nice little, little bit of momentum. Now what's going on? She gets, she's changing her direction so we've got some kind of acceleration going. As she gets to the, the all the way back or all the way forward, her acceleration is pointing to the opposite direction, so her velocity becomes zero. And then when she gets at that equilibrium position, that point in the center, where if she were to just if we were to set her there, she'd stay there. You know, she has no acceleration going on. She has no restoring force trying to take her back to equilibrium because she's already there. So why does she keep going? She keeps going because Newton's first law. She has inertia. Her inertia keeps her going. And so she continues to swing back and forth. Again, we have some friction. We have some outside net force that is accelerating her, causing her to slow down over time. And that's why Dad needs to come and push her until she learns to what? until she learns to kick her legs and keep herself going. Now she has a period. A period is a complete oscillation, one full cycle. And that starts from when she's at the back, she comes forward and goes all the way back again. And we can count the period, her, or her number of periods, in a certain time frame. And so we're going to do that here. We'll start at the 15 seconds, so that's one. And there's two. And there's three. Four five so about five and a half so five and a half oscillations in a 15 second period and we could go 30 seconds we could go a minute it doesn't really matter okay so she has a period where the time it takes her for her to go a full down and back which if we were to count the seconds for a full down and back starting there she has a period of about two seconds it takes her two seconds to do a complete oscillation all right and we, we, we count for over a certain amount of time so that we can get an average. But let's do it again. I'm going to give her a good push. She, and so now we'll get to a point where we can start. We'll do 15 again. So there's 15. 15 seconds. So there's one. There's two. Three. Four five and again she's got about five and a half periods in a 15 second time frame okay. so her amplitude how far we pull her from her equilibrium position isn't really a factor on her period her period is the same so we can rule that out just looking at the data that we just did now let's take a look at something else we have another swing here right now it's motionless I'm gonna get this swing going with her and we'll count the period on that now of course it's not perfect so we will do another 15 second bow starting at we'll say 15 seconds again okay so there's one that started at the center two three four five okay a little over five and a half there so not a whole lot of discrepancy going on there we could do it again notice that she's still swinging along we could do it again all right there's one there's two there's three got a little jangle on the cord so if I had to do this again that would there's four, uh, four, excuse me. Okay, so we had five, five and a half. 
even though I gave it more speed at the beginning, more or less. I pulled it higher from its, its equilibrium. So Eva, my daughter has mass. The other swing, it has mass, but not as much as, as she does. We've added mass to her swing. Mass now, we're seeing that mass is not a, a part of the period. Doesn't matter what the mass is. My daughter could be as light as light can be. She still has more mass. That swing with her on it still has more mass than this one, unless she was massless. There should be more of a discrepancy than, than what we're seeing. Now, if I were to go back and do this again, I would be using a stopwatch that I could start and stop. That's uh, experimental error. We're just doing this for a quick video for you so that you could see the differences or the how harmonic motion plays into effect with pendulums and just some of the things that affect it. Now remember with a mass and with a mass or a, excuse me a spring system the mass did have something to do with it. The mass did affect the period. But with the pendulum no, it doesn't really affect the period at all. And so this is is one of the basis examples of simple harmonic motion that I can give you. Another base, basic one that has a near frictionless environment would be a grandfather clock. Grandfather clocks keep time for long periods of time, all dependent upon the period of the pendulum. And if we had a little bit longer, I would show you how length. Length is also a contributing factor to period. But we'll maybe do that in another video in the future.